Every day on There's No Taste Like Home, Chef Gino De Campo will take three family cooks and the recipes that have been passed down through their families from generation to generation, out of the home and into a professional kitchen. Come on, let's get cooking. Together they'll serve up their treasured dishes to paying customers and the winning dish, judged by Gino, will be added to the restaurant's menu for a month. Remember, this is your great-grandmother's recipes. To prove that there is no taste like home. On today's show, a hearty Italian pasta recipe dating back three generations. My grandmother always told me originally they'd been gypsies, so my great-grandmother would have cooked this over the stove, you know, outside, over the pot. The classic simplicity of a beef stew, full of goodness and flavour, just like great-grandmother used to make. We are doing a 200-years-old recipe. And a stunning fish dish fit for German nobility. We learn the authentic recipe first cooked nearly a hundred years ago. She gave it to the mayor and the mayor's wife and their guests, and then at some point, she must have taken this recipe and shown, and my mom. shown to your mum. I'm Gino da Campo and today I'm in the historical seaside town of Hove in East Sussex. Through the ages many people have made their home in the Hove area, from Roman invaders to Regency high society. And today I'm here to uncover some historical treasures that have remained hidden in the homes of three local cooks. I've got three amazing meals that have been passed down from generation to generation. And my three home cooking stars are going to take over this wonderful restaurant and make their treasured dishes the way their family have made them for generations. Now, let's hurry up because the sea hair is making me really hungry. And it's time now to meet today's cooks. Gay Cossins is making great-grandmother Rosita's spaghetti. Maxine Pancaldi is cooking great-grandma Martha's scouse. And Jana Steinhagen is serving up her grandmother's blue trout. Girls, are we exciting or what? Yes! Yes! yes. 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 Are we, we going to make it? Definitely, definitely. Are we going to have so many pandas out there, so we really have to do a fantastic job? Yes. We will, we will. So we're going to rock and roll very soon? Yes. Let's get cooking! Right. Come on! Let's, get <laughs> let's see how our first cook makes their dish at home. Gay is a 66-year-old grandmother from Staining, Sussex. Her two grown-up children, Byron and Christabel, have flown the family nest, but visit their mum once a week with their children to enjoy the family favourite, as well as cooking it for themselves. Great-grandmother Rosita's spaghetti is a delicious pasta recipe that she can trace back through three generations of her family. The first thing I'm doing is chopping up the onions. So we'll do that quickly. Chop both ends. You can peel it off more easily around the middle. Trick I think my grandmother must have taught me. So I'm putting in three tablespoonfuls of olive oil. I do like to buy a really good one, so look for a really good dark green one. 50 grams of best butter. So we've melted the olive oil and the butter, and now I'm going to put the onions in. In they go. So we'll just let those cook a little bit. These are garlic tops that we've chopped from the garden. I much prefer this because it's more elegant flavour. It's a dish that my grandmother used to say, well, with any cooking, don't think about it, she used to say. Whenever you're cooking, even if it's an omelette or something simple, cook with your heart. In fact, do everything in life with your heart. And um, the whole essence of this dish is it can be cooked really quickly. It was a recipe that my grandmother obviously taught me to cook, you know, during the war, just after the war, when I was tiny. To put the meat in now, about 500 grams. And we'll add a bit of oregano, which is my favourite herb. That's really tasty. My grandmother used to say, if you eat this every day, you'll live forever and you'll always be beautiful. Now, the next bit is the most important part of the dish. You take out a plum tomato and you squeeze it quite low in the pan till the juice and the bits run between your fingers. And that, my darling, is like squeezing your heart into the food. It is the most important part of this dish. Now we need to add uh, the tomato puree to thicken it. 
I like it really strong. Stir all that in, add the herbs, and the flavouring part now comes with the green and the black olives chopped up. Next, we're putting in the really sort of magic ingredient into this pasta, which really brings out all the flavour. We're putting anchovies in, probably about 10. So I'm going to chop these very small and then just stir all that and let it simmer gently till the meat's cooked. And that's the basic sauce, rosita. Now on to another special touch. Um, I've added a garnish. I would normally use nettles that I would pick from the garden, but spinach is another lovely second choice. So we'll add the spinach. I cook that in a very small amount of water and then chop that finely with some scissors. Now on to the pasta. This is just normal, straightforward, cheap pasta. It's long-winded making your own pasta. It is delicious, I know. My grandmother used to make her own pasta, of course. Cook the spaghetti in lightly salted water for 10 minutes. My grandmother used to say if you could throw it against a wall and it sticks, then it's cooked. And there we have it. It's time to serve up now. Simply drain the spaghetti and pour in the sauce, stir it all in, get it well mixed in, put it onto the dish, hollow it out, put in the spinach and that's the dish. So I've got some basil in some olive oil and I spoon a swiggle of that all around the outside of the plate. And that's a very, very special spaghetti rosita. So that's Gay's great-grandmother Rosita's spaghetti. Let's discover a bit more about this dish's romantic heritage. So, Gay, tell me about this fantastic recipe, <laughs> your great-grandmother Rosita. Uh, yes, I want yes. to know everything about Rosita now. <laughs> I'm so interested because this is an Italian dish, is it? Well, it is. Well, it was reputed. My grandmother always told me that they were sort of, originally, they'd been gypsies. So my great-grandmother would have cooked this over the stove, you know, outside, over the pot. How old do you would say this recipe is? Well, my grandmother was born on sort of 1880, so her mother must have been born in 1800. My mother would probably make it once a week. You must have made some kind of changes to this recipe. I make it less rich than my mother did. When my mother cooked it, there would be this huge pan and it would be that deep in green olive oil, you know, around the top oh, yeah? and butter, and lots of butter. I tend to make it less rich now for my granddaughters or sort of people okay. coming to the house. Now, Gay, okay, tell me something. What would it mean to you to get this dish and put it on the restaurant menu for one month? I mean, this celebration of a great dish, what would it mean to you? That would make me cry even thinking about it, actually. Sorry. It would be just... I just think it would be wonderful. It was just... You know, it would bring back all the sunshine and all the love that, you know, my mother and her sort of brought into our lives. She used to teach me to make gnocchi and, and, and spaghetti. We used to roll yes. it. And she used to make me stand yeah. on the chair and she'd pass me this spaghetti, you know, spaghetti. And I used to have to hoop it up over yes. the door. And so it would dry for days, like wet washing, hanging everywhere. I guess that's one of the reasons why you're using dry <laughs> pasta, right? One of them, yes. Well, young lady, I've got a surprise for oh, you. Oh. You <laughs> come with me. Come with me. Come here, I'm going to show you now fresh pasta, because yes. I think yes. that's what you should do. Yes. Fresh yes. pasta like uh, Great Grandmother Rosita, yes. I'm sure yes. she does the fresh, yes. yeah, I'm sure. fresh yeah. pasta, because yeah. it's very simple. Double zero flour, strong flour, eggs, a little salt. Yeah. Okay, so here are how we make the pasta dough. We go plain double zero flour. For every 100 grams of flour, you want one whole egg. You're gonna put a little pinch of salt and a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Mix everything together. And everything slowly, slowly is going to start to combine. So pull everything together. Once you got a beautiful pasta dough rolled into a bowl, unless you're going to use it straight away, wrap in a little bit of clean film and use it whenever you're ready. Now, you start rolling the pasta sheets. So I got it here. Make sure that it's nice and thin. Yeah, we'd roll for That's hours it. on end, rolling across the kitchen table. People still think that it's a difficult thing to do, but if you get the dough right, yeah. it's actually quite easy to make pasta. Beautiful. It looks beautiful. Yeah, my grandmother never got it this thin. The secret now is to make sure that everything is well floured, mm -hmm. OK? My grandmother now will be covered in flour. I do remember that, <laughs> covered in wine. We will be covered in flour ourselves very soon. <laughs> so we cut it. We do it like this, one side. All right. And then we do one more time. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. 
and then one more time. Mm -hmm. See what's happening? Yes, I can. Now we go, we're going to make tagliatelle. Yes. So get yourself a long, sharp knife. Yes, gosh, it looks so simple now you do it, isn't it? It's just so easy. It's very, very simple. Then what you do, you put the knife mm -hmm. on the bottom. Yeah. OK, are you ready? Yes. Whoa! <laughs> Bravo! Like this? Bravissimo! And this is how we make tagliatelle. That's wonderful. Look at that. Oh, very, very like simple. A... Today is going to be a very emotional day for you, I can yes, see that. Is. Making fresh pasta for the first time in almost 30 years, Gay is hopeful that her dish can win its place on the restaurant's menu for a month. I hope I'm going to win it for my children's sake and my grandmother. And uh, I think my kids who have complained about my strange cooking for so many years, you know, I'm going to make them pay for it. <laughs> Maxine Pankalzi is a 41-year-old teacher from Mark Cross in Sussex. Mum Maxine lives with her husband John, son James and daughter Izzy. In this busy home, there's one dish that Maxine can rely on to feed all the family happily and quickly. It's great-grandma Martha's scouse. This classic stew has roots Maxine can trace back through three generations of her family. Let's see how her dish is cooked at home. Scouse is a dish that's really close to my heart, really. It's something that my nan taught my mum, my mum taught me. I peel and I cut a couple of parsnips and about 150 grams of carrot and swede. Then I quarter four organic potatoes. Now for the meat. This is a huge bone of contention, particularly in my family. I like to make scouse with beef. My brother likes to make it with lamb. This is shin of beef. It's absolutely fantastic and it's got these lovely ripples in and it gives it really, really brilliant gravy. I wouldn't believe I used to be a vegetarian, would you? So I'm going to heat about 45 grams of butter until it gets bubbling. Butter is one of those things. It can very quickly go too brown and then it's ruins and it ruins the flavour. And when that's golden and starts to bubble, then I add the meat, cooking it until it's browned. I suppose because I grew up in a, in a cafe, um, environment. I was used to my mum making things and people buying them, so I suppose getting someone to pay for the dish would be quite, it'd be quite nice, it'd be quite flattering really. Okay, so using a slotted spoon, you need to remove the meat from the pan. So the idea is that you're leaving the juices in there. So you've got the butter and you've got the juice from the, from the meat. And then I set it to one side for a couple of minutes. So now it's on to make the delicious gravy. I add the onion, plain flour, and then an oxo cube crumbled in. And it's all going to absorb the meat juices. I wish you could smell this, it smells really nice. I give that a good stir and then I pop the meat back in and you want the basis of the gravy is now going to kind of cling to the meat, if you like. And uh, the meat's had a little chance to rest, which means that all the fibres have kind of whew, relaxed a little bit. And while I'm stirring it, I start to add about 100 ml of water and I cook it for 20 minutes on a low heat. I then add all of the lovely chopped vegetables and the bay leaf and the thyme. This is when the dish starts to come alive because it just, the colours are gorgeous actually. I suppose it's a kind of peasant's dish, isn't it? And, you know, Italian cooking is, is based on a lot of dishes like that. So that's it, we're all set. Pop the lid on and put it in the oven for about three hours. So it's a really simple, easy dish, but I think in a restaurant setting, it's gonna be a challenge because it's, obviously it's gonna take three hours now. So uh, I'll probably be the one that'll have to get up really early and get in there, chopping my veg and get it all in the oven. It's time to make the croutons that I'm gonna serve it with. Using a, a circular pastry cutter, make the crouton and then place them into a bowl with two tablespoons or so of olive oil. And then I put it into the hot frying pan. So now it's time to serve it up. Place a good healthy portion of the scouse on top of the crouton and then carefully make a gravy moat all around the edge. I rest some thyme leaves gently onto the gravy. Delicious. So that's Maxine's great grandma Martha's scouse all the way from Liverpool. Let's uncover more about this dish's fascinating heritage. What is this dish all about? How long has it been in your family? Oh, absolutely years. It goes right back to great-great-grandmother. Yeah. She had a name? Martha. But yeah. Okay, now tell me yeah. a little bit about Martha. She was a greengrocer and okay. her husband was a tea merchant. Okay. Between them, they were in Liverpool, right in the centre, in a place called Breck Road. 
the story that's been passed through the years is that she was quite an amazing lady and she used to just she used to give a lot of things away to the poor and you know she would have been surrounded by all of these ingredients. Originally the dish came from Norwegian sailors. It was a dish that they brought with them. It came from the word lebskaus, but it lost the beginning part of its name and became skaus and that's that's um, that's where it came from. But the sailors, the dockers, everybody used to eat it, used to be served in the workhouses because it was cheap, you know, and the less meat you put in, the cheaper it was. But they used to serve it on a great big slab of um, buttered bread. And that was how oh, wow. I had it as a child. Oh, it was just so tasty, lovely, you know, fresh bread, loads of butter. And it must have been, I can only guess, but it probably because they didn't have plates. You know, the dockers would have just had it sort of, of slopped course, up. Yes, so they'd have yes, had it on yes. a big, you know, Henry VIII style. It would have been on a big piece of bread. There is the story of Martha, your yeah. great grandmother. Would you say that now is a little bit more yours? The heart of the dish is there and my heart's in it. That's kind of how it is. It's oh. a bit cheesy, but that's no, no, no. true. No, no, no. She's at all. It's very no. sweet. And I think because I don't live in Liverpool anymore as well, you know, every time I do it, you know, and I serve it to my children, it's oh. kind of like, oh, it's a bit of so It's kind of a nostalgic... Yeah. Uh, yeah, what they... would it mean to you, this dish, to be in the restaurant menu for one month so really, it's a celebration yeah. of your dish that has been in your family for 200 years. What would it mean to you? I, it, would, it would mean just a huge amount. I think it just means, you know, it's heritage served up every day. You know, it's, it's history. It's, you know, it's good old fashioned food that everybody should be eating. And it's one of those foods that makes everybody feel good. Now, regarding your crouton as well, you have to make sure that it's very crispy. Yes. Very, very crispy. Now, I've seen it that you fry in a little bit of oil. I'm wondering if we're gonna brush with oil mm -hmm. and bake it ah, very low oh, yeah, in the oven so it gets very crispy. Yes. So you can imagine when you put the scouse on top, it's gonna to be yeah. really, really crispy with the tender meat. Whilst Maxine gets to work making the bread for her croutons, the pressure is on as our home cooks busily prepare their beloved family dishes for the first time in a professional kitchen. With just three hours to go before service, each one is hoping that Gino will pick their dish to take pride of place on this restaurant's menu for a month. We've already heard about Gay's delicious tagliatelle and Maxine's great-grandma Martha's scouse. Two amazing dishes with plenty of history. One more to go. So, how does our final cook make their dish at home? Jana Steinhagen is a 38-year-old air stewardess who lives in Brighton, East Sussex. Jana moved to Britain from Germany 20 years ago, bringing her family favourite with her. Blue trout with salted potatoes and horseradish cream, a comforting dish that reminds her of home. This light and flavoursome fish recipe was created by her grandmother, Meta, who cooked for German dignitaries nearly 100 years ago. First thing I do is prepare the poaching water for the fish. So I'm going to chop up my vegetables. My family is back home, I don't get to see them very often. So when I cook this, it is a little bit of a homesickness cure. I add two onions, a carrot, celery, about 10 peppercorns, two bay leaves and a big pinch of salt. Now I leave this to simmer for 30 minutes. Now, whilst the poaching liquor is cooking, I'll prepare my potatoes, which are simply peel and boil for 20 minutes in salted water. I love um, making things look pretty. Um, the, the eye is part of the whole enjoyment of the meal. So if something looks like it's being slapped on the plate, you're not going to enjoy it as much as if it looks like a piece of art. So maybe I won't be able to make it a piece of art, but I'll do my best to make it look pretty. So I'm just popping on my potatoes to cook. Then I get cucumber salad, thinly sliced cucumber with a simple dressing made from fresh dill. Some salt, sugar and then a tiny bit of vinegar. So what we've created here in the bottom is all the, the juices of the cucumber coming out already and creating its own lovely dressing. So I'm going to leave it for a little bit so that it can continue to happen and then I'll have a little taste. I also make a fresh horseradish cream. I grate one horseradish root with 100 grams of creme fraiche. <laughs> Smell it, <laughs> it make your eyes water. <laughs> and season with a little salt and a little sugar. Just a sprinkling, that'll do. The horseradish sauce is quite sharp and it counteracts the whole softness of the rest of the fish and potatoes. The water has now simmered for about half an hour and I'm ready to put 100 mils of vinegar in. 
This is basically what makes the fish turn blue. So it's the magic ingredient. Now back to the fish. I'm using trout today. When I was little, we used to have carp for special occasions. But today I'm using trout and trout is fine. <laughs> I'm going for a swim now. Okay, good luck. Go blue, please. The fish takes about 12 minutes to cook. When the fish is about ready, it's time to make the scrummy butter sauce. Simply melt 200 grams of butter and whisk in a little of the poaching liquor. Originally, my mum would have just used the melted butter and I would always wonder why just the melted butter? It's a little bit boring. So I decided to add some of the cooking liquor from the fish just to give it some extra flavour. This is my new invention. <laughs> now it's time to check on the fish. Can you just see now? There it's going blue. Time to serve up. I like to garnish my plate with a little salad leaf and the cucumber salad on top and the horseradish cream next to it. I like to serve the fish whole and the potatoes on the side sprinkled with some parsley and not to forget the scrummy butter sauce. So there you are, a German dish, not as boring as bratwurst and sauerkraut, something different, worth a try. So that's Jana's blue trout with salted potatoes and horseradish cream. Let's discover more about this dish's noble history. Jana, come Gino. on. <laughs> Tell me about this beautiful recipe. Tell me, what's the title of the recipe? OK, my recipe is trout blue. A trout blue. Trout blue, cooked okay. blue. Yes, it's a traditional recipe that we always have for New Year's Eve, every year oh, really? for New Year's Eve. So it's, it's kind of a celebration recipe, it New is. Year's Eve. That's it. Where does it come from? My grandmother used to work as a cook in like a manor house. What's your grandmother's name? Meta. She used okay. to manage the kitchen, and I believe it was the mayor who lived there. Wow. Yeah, so it's a posh recipe then. So it's she like learned the recipe there, yes. she gave it to the mayor and the mayor's wife and their guests, and then at some point she must have taken this recipe and, show and shown to your mum. And cooked it when we were together at home, yeah. Now, what does it mean for you when you go back home and the dishes on the table, all the family together? It must be a great feeling, right? It is like the feeling of being home and the family coming together and talking, telling stories and tucking into the food. It's very homely. Yeah, it the makes... memory comes back, of yeah. course, the It makes grandmother. me feel like being at home. Tell me, what would it mean to you and to your mother and to your grandmother to have this dish on the restaurant menu. What would it mean? Yeah, I think I'm quite proud to, for my grandmother and I'm like sort of thinking of her doing it. And my mum also, I know she, already she's very proud when I told her that I'm going to do it. So yes, it's, it's really nice. It would be so a great... It, give, it gives me an honour to, to do it for them. To do it. Yeah. I think you're going to be absolutely fine. The only concern that I have is about the actually the old trout. That is the only concern that I have. So is mine. Ah, that's quite interesting. Know, and, uh, and what do you think of the customer up here they're going to say when they're going to see the whole I, trout? I am a little bit worried about that because not a lot of people know how to eat how a whole fish. How to do fish. it. Yeah. But I tell you what, I, I'm going to show you a tip here because I got it here, OK? I'm going to show you what we could do because I think my tip is if you put this on a plate, we're going to completely freak them out. They wouldn't know what to do, they wouldn't know how to do it, where to start. How about if we're going to fillet it for them? Right. Now, Jana, let me show you how we fillet a fish, OK? First of all, you need to make sure that it's all clean inside. And the way you want to do it, get yourself a nice, sharp knife, OK? And what you do it from the head, you start it to cut on the head like this, and then you just go all the way down, following can you see that there is a backbone here, okay? You just follow in the backbone. Then the only thing you have to do is to just go down with a knife on the other side, like this, okay? Until the end, and there you have it. Now, it's good because we can still keep the skin on, so you stay true to the recipe, so hopefully it's gonna become blue, okay? Make sure that you take all these little bones out of it. Yeah. And then it's very simple. The other thing, make it pretty. So if there is any extra that you want to take it out, okay, like this, just take it out so it looks pretty. In this case, you have your recipe, which is still traditional, a little tip how to fillet it, and everybody's a winner. You're genius. Ah, uh, no, I'm Gino. Oh, you're yeah. genius. Not genius, mm -hmm. Gino. <laughs> with only two hours until service, as the three home cooks get to grips with preparing their dishes for a restaurant full of paying customers, the pressure is beginning to show. 
Maxine has baked her bread and is ready to make the croutons. It'll be all right if I can get this bread to just calm down and cool down. <laughs> Having made her tagliatelle, Gay is now preparing her great-grandmother Rosita's special sauce. It dates so far back in my history that I just know that all those grandmamas up there, I'm going to make them all very proud. And Jana has cleverly delegated her fish filleting and is busy putting the finishing touches to her lemon and dill garnish. It's quite special for my family, so I'm hoping to do them proud and I hope that they will be proud of me and our dish. That's today's menu. Over 400 years of knowledge passed down from generation. Great-grandmother, grandmothers, mothers, daughters, each one a favorite recipe in their family right here in Hove. But can they handle a professional kitchen? They're going to have to cook for 50. The clock is ticking and there is a lot of work to be done. Which recipe will win a place on the restaurant menu? We will soon find out. Don't go away. Welcome back to There's No Taste Like Home. Today, I'm in the beautiful seaside town of Hove, where I met my three fantastic cooks and their great recipes that they've been passed down through their family for generations. But today, they are not cooking for their family. Today, they will be cooking for a restaurant full of paying customers. They will have to compete to have the honor of having their dish added to this restaurant menu starting from tomorrow. But which one will be the winner? Gay Cossins is making her great-grandmother Rosita's tagliatelle, a hearty meal that's been in the family for over 100 years. My grandmother used to say, you eat this every day, you live forever, and you'll always be beautiful. Maxine Pancaldi is hoping to impress with her great-grandmother Martha's Scouse, a cherished recipe that has been cooked by her family since the turn of the last century. It's a really simple, easy dish, but I think in a restaurant setting it's going to be a challenge. And Jana Steinhagen is making blue trout with salted potatoes and horseradish cream, a dish originally presented to German dignitaries by her grandmother Meta. When I cook this, it is a little bit of a homesickness cure. It's 10 minutes before service and already there's a queue of hungry diners waiting outside the restaurant, all eager to try our three home cooks' fantastic dishes. Let's hope they're not disappointed. Let's go back to the kitchen and see how my home cooks are doing. A bit nervous. I'm just going to do it with my heart and just, you know, throw myself in at the deep end room. I'm most nervous about cooking the fish because fish has to be done just right, not too long, not too short, not overcooked or undercooked. So it's quite important, quite an important part and I'm a little bit nervous to see when it's all going to happen and if I'm going to do it properly. My biggest fear with this dish is really the timing because it's one of those things that is perfect for a busy mum. You shove it in the oven and you leave it but obviously we've got timing issues here today so hopefully it'll all come off. So Maxine, where are you? We're almost there, we're just drizzling these, get them okay. in the oven, get them nice and crispy, it's very fresh. Normally when I make it at home, I'd do it a couple of days before I'd make the bread, so okay. slightly different today. But so. are you going to make sure that they're going to be nice and crispy? Because we spoke about it, we, yeah, they yeah. need to be, to be beautiful crispy. and crispy. Yeah. So what are you going to do, straight in the oven? Yes. Okay, have you got everything right. prepared? Are you going to be ready for service? Yes, we are. Are you excited? No, terrified. Why not? No, I just want to get this in the oven. Okay, go for it, <laughs> go for it. Tell me something, you got your sauce ready? Yes, already. Okay, what about when it's service time? If I ask you for a two, three pasta, what's your plan? It's, I put the, the so pasta's going to be cooked, that only takes okay. a few minutes because it's fresh pasta yes, cooked a lot yes. quicker. What about if yeah. I want to shout order one after the other? I can do it, I can do it. You can manage. I'm used to being shouted at. Oh, <laughs> by high ten then. By my Italian grandmother, hey, good hey. Well, good luck. <laughs> Thank you. So, Jana, ready for service? I think so. Yeah? <laughs> You look a little bit panicky. Relax, relax. Breathe. Okay. <laughs> breathe, breathe, breathe. Be, I want you. to see the fish. Okay. What have you done with the fish? Um, the fish is here. Okay. It is now filleted ah. and rolled up into the. I little... see. So you fillet it and then you rolled it. Yeah. So it's much more friendly to the eye and yeah. it's quicker to cook. Yeah. Straight away into the fridge Thank because you. it's fish. <laughs> now, have you got all your veg done? Everything yeah. is done? Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. So you're ready for service? Yes, ready, ready to I go. will be with Let's you 100%, go. so okay. Thank let's you, Gino. begin. <laughs> Finally, it's lunchtime, and whether our cooks are ready or not, restaurant manager Ben Ranger must open the doors to his customers. 
Hello, Jane. Thanks How's it going? Christine. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. There's a fantastic turnout of Hove's local residents. Even the mayor has come down to try out these recipes that have stood the test of time. That's going to work for me. My father's Italian, so I'm having the tagliatelle today. I'm going to go for the fish. Yes, I think I'm going to go for the fish. With service about to start, it's now up to Gino to take on the role of head chef and make sure that everything going out of the kitchen is not only cooked properly, but is also beautifully presented. So before anybody orders, each dish must pass his taste test. First to be sampled is Gay's great-grandmother Rosita's tagliatelle. The pasta I have no problem whatsoever because of course I showed her how to make fresh tagliatelle from scratch and it absolutely looks great. The bolognese, I'm gonna have to see. I love the olives, which usually you never put on a bolognese um, dish. And I like this cute little spinach. Overall, good dish, parmesan cheese on top. What would you want more? Great, fantastic. Next, it's Maxine's grandma Martha's scouse. It's time now to taste Maxine's scouse. And I have to say, it looks quite good, well presented. Mmm. Very simple flavors, meat is tender. I was a big concern about the crouton on the bottom of the stew, but I have to say, this is nice and crispy, just the way I like it. And finally, it's Jana's turn with her blue trout served with salted potatoes and horseradish cream. This is trout blue. I thought it would be quite plain, and I think the horseradish cream works really well with the um, trout blue. Overall, a good dish. With all three dishes making the grade, Gino heads upstairs to check front of house. How are you? Very well, sir. How things are going? Yeah, very well. Good. Very this well. looks good, is it? Oh, no, Full restaurant. <laughs> At the end of the day, you and I, we're going to have to choose which dish is going to go in your restaurant. Fantastic. So make sure that you hear the comment of the people, yep. see when he comes up, and then we have a chat later on. Yes. All yeah, right? Look to good it. luck with his lot. Thank you. How are you? Oh, what a pleasure, what a pleasure to meet you. And a pleasure for me to meet you too. Oh, thank you for coming down for lunch. You are in for a treat. What a pleasure. The mayor's not the only important person here to try the food. Maxine's mum, Rowena, and daughter Izzy have also come to make sure she stays true to the family Hello. recipe. Hello, Gina. Are you okay? <laughs> so you must be Rowena. I am. Rowena, and you are? Easy, easy. Now, do you think there is any change that Maxine made to the recipe since you showed her how to do it? Yes. Yeah? I always use lamb. Oh, you use lamb? Mm -hmm. Oh, she did say, she did say that her brother, Maxine's brother, oh, used I'm lamb. I'm actually using lamb. Oh, I see, I see. Apart from that, any changes? No. No? no do you think it's a good fine. recipe? No. How often do you eat at home? A lot. A lot? Yeah. Uh, are you saying that that's the only thing that mommy can do? Is the scouse yeah. recipe? <laughs> No, she can do other stuff, right? But this one is a special one, right? A special one. Well, girls, have a great lunch, and uh, I'm sure that the food is gonna be fantastic. All right, I'll see you later, I'll see you later. By the end of lunch service, Gino will award one dish the honor of being on this restaurant's menu for a month. His decision will look at three main criteria, cost of ingredients, preparation time in the kitchen, and the reaction of the diners. Gino heads back to the kitchen, ready for the first order. Okay, ladies, we are ready for service now. Whenever the ticket is gonna come for the order, I'm gonna shout the order. I need to know that you heard what I said. And the only way that I know that you understood is to say, yes, chef. So whenever I say the order, if I want a scouse, I call a scouse. If I want a pasta, I call pasta. If I say fish, I say fish. The only way I know that you heard the order is when you say, yes, chef. So every time I say the order, yes, chef, so I know that you got it. Okay? So big smile. You look so terrified. Come on. Remember, this is your great grandmother's recipes that are going to be here on the pass, straight up says. So big smiles. Take it seriously, but big smiles, and let's get cooking. All right? Yes? Fantastic. Everybody in position. Guys, fish. I need fish. Two, three scouts and two, three pasta. Yes, chef. One more scouts and one fish. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Can you hear me? I'm just waiting for the pasta to boil now. And my homemade pasta. Okay, is this pasta cooked? Yes. Have you tried it? Yes, we have. Have you tried it? Well, we have, yes. Yeah, you picked it up, yes. you tried yes. it, you're happy, national yes. dandy, yes. like a grandmother used yes. to do, right? Yes, yes. Fantastic. <laughs> 
gay. She seems under control. I know I don't know how fast she's gonna be with the pasta. We'll soon find out. I need two scars for the mayor, please. Yes, Bye. chef. <laughs> so we're plating up for the mayor. Hopefully you'll like it. Doesn't look as pretty as it probably would, but <laughs> we're getting there. Maxine, she got a little bit of panicking with the bread. I just hope that it's gonna be nice and toasty. I need four fishes, guys. I need fish. It's faster happening than I could think. <laughs> Jana, I think she's the one who's got everything absolutely under control. So should there be no problem whatsoever. Is this fish cooked? It, is it? it? Is it cooked? It I is. don't know. Have you, have it you checked say, it before yes. you put it? Yeah? yeah? Would your grandmother be happy with this? She'd be over the moon with that, actually. Look at that. I think it's actually <laughs> quite pretty. Finally, Gino is happy and allows the dishes to make their way out of the kitchen and up to the paying diners. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. That looks nice. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Thank you very much. Okay, we'll have a tea. Thank you. It smells wonderful and it looks fabulous. It smells really delicious, lots of deep flavours. Looks very good. I come from Liverpool and it looks nice. I like the olives in it. I never think about putting olives in that kind of sauce. And that's a really nice addition. I like it a lot, actually. Come on, guys, fishes, pastas, cows. Bring it to me, bring it to me, bring it to me. <laughs> Under pressure here. Have you got two ready? Yeah, there's one. Okay, give me two and then do me four. Give me one scouse now. Actually, give me two of them. How long for these fishes? 30 se 20 seconds now. You said 30 seconds two minutes ago. I... <laughs> See what I mean? They're all coming at the same time. It's quite quick serving, isn't it? Everybody's happy, everybody's working. I'm ringing a bell. With only a few tables left to order, our cooks are managing to keep up with the hectic pace of running service in a professional kitchen. It looks really pretty, actually. Um, I think it's a, as I say, it looks incredibly summery and it's, it sort of looks, looks very um, light and tempting, quite, quite a ladies' dish, I think. It's comfort food, isn't it? Looks great. I had the tagliatelle. Um, the sauce was very rich and um, the pasta was cooked properly. I need one more scouse. They're loving the food upstairs, guys. Yeah. Guys, they're absolutely loving the food, by the way. OK, so everybody, well done so far. Maxine, I need one more. Maxine, it's one coming, more. It's Can I have the pasta? Yes. No. Sorry. Five seconds. Maxine? Yes, chef. One more, please. Yes, chef. We're nearly done. And from what I see, the orders is quite equal. With service nearly over for our three home cooks, it seems that the food is going down well with the diners. All three have been absolutely fantastic, but which one is going to make it on the menu? OK, guys, the last order, two more and final scouts. No more. Yay! I'm just sending out the last two. Two scouts, table number 14. Give me five. <laughs> come on, come here and give yourself a round of applause. I think you did absolutely <laughs> amazing. I think it was great. The fish was great, the pasta was unbelievable, your scars was very good. How do you feel? I loved it. It was great. So yeah? What do you think about your grandmothers? Would they be happy? Yes, I'd be amazed. Yeah? yeah? They'd be amazed to see, you know, this yeah. little dish that is, I don't know, 200 years old, in a restaurant, yeah. 70, 80 people up there. Called by Gino himself. You should have yeah. been very proud. You should have been very proud, seriously. I think yeah. we should do a group yeah. hug. Yeah. A group hug. <laughs> With service over, our cooks have done all they can to secure their dishes place on the restaurant's menu for one month. It's now up to the diners, restaurant manager Ben Ranger and head chef Steve Beadle to help Gino make his difficult decision. I had trout. It was absolutely delightful, beautiful. Really nicely put down, lovely. I've enjoyed it very much. The, the trout was beautiful, very, very beautiful. I had the uh, scouse. It was really, really tasty when you got in there. Toast, homemade bread was really wonderful. The tagliatelle was stunning. The, the ribbons were really, 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 really thin. Although I do like a little bit of rustic fatness to it, it was really, really lovely. Well, the diners seem to have enjoyed the dishes, but which one will Gino pick? Will it be gay cossins with great-grandmother Rosita's tagliatelle? A hearty meal with romantic origins, first cooked over an open fire in Naples 100 years ago. What would it mean to you? That would make me cry even thinking about it, actually. Sorry. It would be just... I just think it would be wonderful. It was just... You know, it would bring back all the sunshine and all the love that, you know, my mother and her sort of brought into our lives.
or Maxine Pancalzi with her great-grandmother Martha's Scouse, a traditional working-class stew from Liverpool, originating at the turn of the last century. It would meet uh, just a huge amount. My heart's in it. That's kind of how it is. Oh. A bit cheesy, but that's no, no, no. true. No. That's what she said to It's very no. sweet. Or can Jana Steinhagen win with her blue trout with salted potatoes and horseradish cream, a dish originally served to German dignitaries by her grandmother Meta over a century ago? I'm quite proud to, for my grandmother, and I'm like sort of thinking of her doing it. And my mum also, I know already she's very proud when I told her that I'm going to do it. So yes, it's, it's really nice. It would be so a great... It, it, it gives uh, me uh, an uh, honour to, to do it for them. Gino welcomes the cooks into the restaurants to find out which of their heritage dishes will win a place on the menu. What a reception, yeah? Wonderful. How do you feel? Oh, oh. very elated. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very relieved everyone looks alive. Yeah. No, everybody is alive, actually. I've checked everybody. They ate. Did you enjoy the foods? Yeah. Look at that. Everybody really, really happy. Now, of course, I had to make a decision. I had to make a decision. One of your dish is going to be on this restaurant menu for one month. OK? It wasn't easy, believe you me, because I absolutely loved all three dishes. I saw the dishes coming back in the kitchen and the plates were absolutely empty. Now is the time that I'm going to have to reveal the winner. All three dishes, they are absolutely fantastic. And today is the day where we celebrate good food, home-cooked food that has been for generations in your family. And today's winner on There's No Taste Like Home is... Jana with the trout blue with salty potato and cucumber salad. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well, this is for you because you really deserve it. I have to say, well done once again. You are the winner of There's No Taste Like Home. I won, oh my God. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I'm just so pleased for Yana. Her dish looks so beautiful and it just, it, it really did. She deserved to win. It was really, really lovely. It's been brilliant just taking part. Great. I just think it's brilliant that Yana won. I mean, she's just such a lovely lady. She was actually the most nervous of all of us and I think she had the hardest dish to prepare as well. So I think she's just done amazingly well and I'm absolutely thrilled for her. What a fantastic result for Yana. Join me next time when I'll be meeting three more talented home cooks eager to prove that there's no taste like home.